Um, we were told this morning that you are, uh, uh, shall we say, advocating a, a kind of a three-point program of recommendations uh, that might be used in the United States. Uh, um, transfer of agricultural uh, technology from the chemical basis to a biological basis as quickly as possible, um, solar heating and uh, uh, examination of uh, industrial activity to eliminate as much transportation as possible, uh, you know, uh, transporting of materials as possible. Can you elaborate on, on some of those things? And specifically, I think all of us want to know, um, how can people who are in this room and so forth do something about getting some of these programs going? I and mean, we've got one senator here, but what about the rest of us? The fuel policy or energy policy is, is, has for a long time been conceived as a policy to find substitutes for the oil imports that may no longer be available. But uh, having dealt with this for so many decades myself, I know that there is no substitute for oil. All attempts to find substitutes can only lead to minute contributions. So the real fuel policy is not to find a substitute for oil imports, but to reduce requirements, as the senator has said already. So it has to have a point, a, a pointedness. And it seems to me one goes for the easiest things first. Now the easiest thing, relatively speaking, that's all a relative term, everything is difficult, is uh, domestic heating. Domestic heating is ideally suited for solar energy. This is uh, not quite ready, but uh, ready enough so that a lot of uh, application can happen in a fairly short time. Domestic heating takes about 20% of all energy use in, in, the, in, in this country. So that's a big thing to go for. For this, solar energy is ideal. It doesn't do the whole job, but if it does 50% or 60% of the job, that's already a very big gain. The second big field that I would single out myself, uh, because it is so vital, would be agriculture. It's only in the last 50 years that modern agriculture on any large scale has made itself dependent on fossil fuels. Uh, got hooked on them. Well, the, the principle of the most famous British agricultural college, the Royal Agricultural College, told his students, uh, what we are teaching you now will not be applicable when you're 50 which is a bit of a dusty message to a 20-year-old one, because the resources won't be there. <coughs> Agriculture must switch over to a permanent basis, <laughs> therefore from chemistry to biology, from chemical farming to biological farming. This can be done. Many courageous practitioners, practitioners in many countries are doing it already. I have uh, the, the, the pleasure of being the president of the Soil Association in Britain, the organization of the organic farmers, on promoting the alternative agricultural systems. Now, agriculture takes also uh, all the supporting services, a very substantial proportion of all energy use in this country. And there's no use waiting and no use wasting any time because if, we, if the energy is not there for agriculture, we simply starve to death. That's the second point. Now, the third point is another very big item of, of um, <coughs> energy use as goods transportation. Why do we have to transport so much? Uh, if we realize how absurd it is. I said before, if I drive up the M1, this is the big motorway from London to Glasgow, I find myself in a big fleet of, uh, of uh, trucks carrying cookies from London to Glasgow. On the other carriageway, there's an equally big <laughs> fleet of trucks carrying cookies from Glasgow to London. <laughs> and you visitor from another star would infallibly come to the conclusion to get the right quality into cookies, you have to transport them at least 500 miles. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all, that's all right if you have plenty of gasoline to do so. But if we don't have the, the gasoline or the diesel oil, then uh, we must see that the point of production, the point of consumption are put as close together as possible. Now that means we must look for possibilities of creating a small-scale technology for more decentralized production. If we can have a cement works or brick works or, or cookie factories or bakeries or whatever you can think of in all small towns and achieve a higher level of self-sufficiency, not total self-sufficiency, relative, 
then we don't have to count so many things uh, ac across the countryside, and this will be necessary. This is not uh, simply a recommendation for a better society, that this is, is, is a response to the energy crunch into which we are un unquestionably moving. These were the three main prongs of a fuel policy that I would have in mind if anybody asked me. 